Deep within our ancestry lies a need to gather, to hoard, clinging to possessions, and yes, even to people. This need translates into our philosophy, into the way we see the world. This is correct thinking. This is what the world is, and this is what it means to be right, to be orthodox. We associate ourselves so strongly with our ideas of what is right, what is proper, what should be and what should not be, that we instinctively label any difference to our way of thinking as heretical, as evil, as disordered thinking, to be denied and suppressed. This is me with all the ideas intrinsic to my being, and so I lash out at the other, idiot, fool, renegade. Yet we, if we view ourselves across time, find something very unsettling. As a young child I thought in a certain way and I judged inherent to my being. Time moved on and I viewed the self as a student with new thoughts and new ideas, changing from my childhood, but still this new thinking I thought of as inherent to my being, intrinsic to my personhood. Marriages, births, deaths, and time progressed with all those new relationships and all those new attachments. Yet still we thought of ourselves as this unchanging being attached to all those feelings, emotions and judgments. I think therefore I am. We are beings moving in three-dimensional space-time, continually changing, developing, evolving. Our intrinsic human dignity does not lie in any two-dimensional slice of space-time. So on the words words of prophetic speaking to each one of us today. Christ must increase and I must decrease. Each one of us is called to prepare the way for the Lord so that we may become the true image of the exemplar, that divine exemplar of Christ that is already within us. We miss the mark when we give power and authority to the passions and dramas that we associate with ourselves. These are all the guises of the false self of the egotistic being that we must divest through the process of humble self-emptying kenosis. The call to repentance is a call to a new way of seeing, learning to see with the eye of the heart. This calls on us to let go of the traditional progression of building blocks of judgments that rule who is worthy and who is unworthy. Kenosis is the opposite of our clinging to control of the space-time as an unchanging singularity. This calls for our hearts to resonate with a heart that now beats within the Trinity beyond all time and space. It is only from that broken heart that we can expand and increase our capacity for compassion and love to see as God sees and to look upon creation as good. Increasing the size of the aperture through which we love can flow, leads us always to new dimensions. Thomas Merton wrote in Conjectures of a Guilt Guilty Bystander, at the center of our being is a point of nothing with nothingness, which is untouched by sin and by illusion, a point of pure truth, a point of spark, which belongs entirely to God, which is never at our disposal from which God disposes of our lives, which is inaccessible to the fantasies of our minds or the brutalities of our own will. This little point of nothingness and absolute poverty is the pure glory of God in us. It is, so to speak, his name written in us as our poverty, as our indigence, as our dependence, as our son and daughtership. It is like a pure diamond blazing with the invisible light of heaven. It is in everybody, and if we could see it, we would see billions of points of light coming together in the face and blaze of the sun that would make all the darkness and cruelty of life vanish completely. I have no program for this, for seeing this. It is only given, but the gate of heaven is everywhere. The Lord grant you peace.